Hello and welcome to the Dog News Show Crufts 2013 special. We've had a great time already. It's been a wonderful, wonderful show. I'm Debbie Connolly. I'm Julie Hill, and we're absolutely thrilled to be here at Crufts, and we've got some great stories coming up for you. And I know Debbie's thrilled that I'll be talking poo again. More poo. In this show, I'm going to be talking to Alex Wilson from Extra Dog, who makes a range of products, including Thundershirt, about uh, car safety and car harnesses. I'm going to talk to my old mate, Mark Abraham, well-known TV vet, about crufts and puppy farming. And I'm going to be talking to John Howie from Lint Bells about supplements and show dogs. I'll be talking to Farah Stevens from the Animal Health Trust about the fantastic effort on the stand to raise money and awareness of the the new cancer centre. I'll be talking to Jill Diamond about the poo wormery, which is a great way to use your dog's poo for something good. And we've got a fantastic schmaltz corner where I talk to Steve and Lorraine Wright, who celebrated their 40th wedding anniversary at Crufts. So here's my first interview with Alex Wilson of Extra Dog, a surprising story about the lack of testing in dog car safety harnesses. Tell me a little bit about Extra Dog, what's it all about? Well, we launched Extra Dog about four years ago because we struggled to find products for our own dogs that we liked, particularly in this country, and we wanted to create a company selling dog training equipment that fitted into the ethos of both the association of, of pet dog trainers so completely non-punitive right. um, but benefited dogs um, plus products suitable for the Tellington T-Touch training technique. Yes. Tell me a little bit about where did you start? What was your first product? The first product came totally by accident. I was on a ski holiday in America wandered into a pet shop because um, I couldn't find a collar for my new husky puppy but I liked in the UK wandered into a pet shop in Colorado and found the Spiffy Dog Air Collar which is a lovely lightweight quick drying collar creates no fur damage and the dogs are really happy to wear and them. it's made out of the same stuff as trainers is yeah it? it's a material called Aerospacer which yeah. a lot of the big um, trainer shoe manufacturers use right um, so it's breathable but it's a really soft porous material yes and um, the dogs the dogs don't have any issues wearing it yeah, and I remember that collar a few years ago and look at you now with this wonderful stand you've got so much product now I know that one of your things at the moment is you're pushing for education on car safety tell me what that's about well it's a few a couple of years ago um, we had customers who were asking us for car harnesses for dogs and we started looking around at what was available in the UK to to um, stock and one of the questions I started asking suppliers was were the harnesses safety tested in any way and a lot of the suppliers became rather sheepish and really? wouldn't answer the question so was um, that a surprise that they hadn't actually been tested because obviously children's ones have to be don't they more than a surprise a complete shock right. i assume that some of the big brand car harnesses would have had proper tensile and safety testing and was really rather gobsmacked to find car harnesses in this country generally are not tested right it's, uh, there's no standards, I assume, in the same way that there are for children's products. Unfortunately not. Um, you and I could go to China, buy the nastiest, cheapest harness on the market, right. and sew the words car harness on it, and there's nothing legally to stop us doing so. It, it's quite frightening, isn't it? When you think of the size of some dogs as well, they're actually considerably heavier than a, a, an average child would be too. There's also the other aspect is also the, the people within the car because you imagine, a tw- a, say, a 23 kilo dog yes. in a car accident at, 20, uh, say, 60, 70 miles an hour. That could be nasty. Um, that could not only kill the dog, but it could also kill the, pa- kill the passengers, the driver. Absolutely. Um, you really don't want that dead weight flying around the car Absolutely. in an accident. It's quite frightening, really, when you think about it. Now, you've got a product that uh, you found that actually is tested, haven't you? Would you like to just show yeah, me that we- for a minute? It. Um, that's it. Let's have a look at this. So this is Dog Auto Harness by Bergen. So tell me a little bit about this one. Well, we sourced this product in the United States, and I met the Bergen team about three years ago. Right. And I noticed on their packaging they had a, a V9 DT mark. Right. And I asked um, their then marketing director or vice president what that actually what that was all about. And he said that, that was they they had had their, their harness tensile tested, um, and 
and, and safety tested right. and the, the independent laboratory that did it came up with, with the category of a V9DT Mark which was an independent um, car safety test for right. dog harnesses um, and to become a pet standard in the US okay. so we decided that this was the product that we were going to import into the UK Is this the only one that you found that's actually tested We like are this? aware of a Swedish product which is also tested and is imported by another small company like ourselves right. but as far as we're concerned and I'm not and I, I don't I'm not 100% certain but we're, as far as we, we're aware the Swedish harness and the Bergen harness are the only ones that have had any proper testing that, um, that's available in the UK market Tell me a bit about what um, reception you've had to this product since you've been selling it um, We've had a really good good reception at first we had to convince the market that um, that this is a more expensive product than your 15, 12, 15 pound cheap car harness. And how much does this one retail for? They start at 29 pounds and right. go up according to size. Right. But what we are finding is people are now starting to think about their dog safety. Yes. To a lot of people, a dog is, is like a child. Absolutely. Um, and they want Better than a child to some of them. I dogs. quite agree. <laughs> and people are realizing that their dog safety or their own safety in a car is paramount. Yes. Um, and people are willing to spend a little bit more money buying buying a good quality car harness so that if in the unlikely event of an accident their dog is safe but also they're not going to have a problem of a dog flying through the car. Well absolutely I mean nobody would go to a pound shop and buy a harness for their their child in a car so why are they buying cheap products and is it a price issue or is it just a lack of knowledge about the fact that these none of these things have been tested whatever they cost? I think a lot of it is, is education. Um, a lot of people are not just they go to a, a well-known manufacturer you know there are car harnesses endorsed by auto organizations yes people buy people buy with confidence in a brand mm. but they're not actually reading up about that, whether or not that this is the right product me too, the fact that some of these um, well-known branded stores who talk about human safety in cars actually promote and endorse certain products that, that haven't actually been tested for dogs it, it's it's it actually came as a shock when you first mentioned this to me. Well, I, I, I suppose one, you know, looks at looking at a big picture. Any any car harness is better than no car harness. Yes. But I think you have to look at the situation that um, there is a difference between a car restraint and a lot of the um, products out there on, in the UK market are really dog restraints for cars. Yes. Um, because of and the, they're because, not safe. And they're not, but they're not tested. Okay. Um, and you know, it is a grey area with the highway code. The highway code states that um, the dogs must not be a distraction in the car so mm. restraining a dog in a car in whatever harness um, satisfies the highway code oh, but absolutely. it does not protect the dog yeah. in and the same way the that, that a seatbelt would thing. protect us. Now tell me a bit about the show, what sort of a show have you had this year? Brilliant, um, the Kennel Club as always and Tracy Harris and her team have done the most incredible job getting, yes. getting everybody here Hall 1 has been the place to be absolutely. and we've just had a fantastic time Good, very pleased Lovely to see you again Alex Great to see you Thank you, you so much Alex Wilson, Extra Dog The first story I'm going to bring you is my interview with Farah Stevens from the Animal Health Trust and as you'll find out they were going to great lengths to raise awareness and money of the new Cancer Health Centre so tell me, why are people putting themselves through this, this torture on the bike? What's we've, going on? We've actually got um, a number of our vets and scientists and other staff from the Animal Health Trust here. We're ta undertaking a cycling challenge at Crufts. We're trying to cycle 400 miles, yeah. hoping that people who are coming past are going to support our cyclists and throw a few pennies, pounds into the buckets to help our cancer research work. Yeah. Cancer is a, a really common problem in dogs. In fact, yeah. it's the most common cause of death in dogs. Really? Although it is actually the most curable condition in those if, it, if it's caught early enough and the right yeah. treatments are available. So the, um, we've recently opened the Kennel Club Cancer Centre at yeah. the Animal Health Trust. Um, and that's a new radiation facility to, to offer radiotherapy, which complements other treatments. So we're really excited about what that means for treating animals in the here and now that have yeah. got cancer. But clearly, 
we're here trying to raise money to pay more for the research so that yeah. we can find new ways to diagnose and, um, and prevent it and hopefully kind of cure it, stop it from happening. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, it is a terrifying thing. My dog had cancer last year right. and it's all you hear is, death, I'm going to lose my dog. That's not the case, is it? There's no, hope. no, it's not at all. And I think what people, you know, lots of people have heard about cancer in humans and it's quite, it's quite different. It's obviously the similar sort of disease, yeah. but the fact of the matter that in dogs and, and cats, you're kind of trying to... Um, treat the condition you're trying to control it as such and give that animal a good quality of life whereas in a human you're trying to eradicate them of it so the treatment is a lot more invasive whereas with dogs and cats you just want to give them enough so that they can have a good standard a good quality of life um, and so and that's what we always do at the animal health trust we always put the quality of um, the dog's life ahead yeah. of the quantity of it yeah yeah and I think the important thing is don't be afraid of it I mean when when I found Buddy's lump yeah we found it on a Friday tea time yeah. Saturday morning we were at the vet I mean yeah. is that important you know be proactive yeah absolutely and I think with any conditions people shouldn't be nervous about taking their dogs to their vets you know they you know you're not you're not going to be stupid and like you said the the earlier you can get in to- get on top of these sorts of things yeah. the better chance your dog has and people shouldn't be worried about words like radiotherapy and chemotherapy because actually a lot of the dogs that come to see us they don't lose their hair you wouldn't really know they were sick and they you know they always get a treat at the end of it so they're always very yeah. happy to see our vets yeah. that specialize in cancer yeah i mean there's no guarantee that it's going to be the right path for your dog but you do you've never had more options than now have you no and we're really really excited about the, the new kennel Cal- club cancer center at the ht because that offers that enables us to offer radiotherapy as well as chemotherapy and surgery which are all the three treatment options so that means each and every single dog that comes through the door gets an individual case you know yeah. it's it's treated for its specific cancer whatever that will be so the program is designated for the dogs and that's really exciting that is going to give so many more dogs the best yeah. opportunity to fight whatever cancer they're fighting. Yeah, definitely. Now, how are we doing? We've got 400 miles doing Crufts. There's 100 miles a day. I wouldn't like to have a go. How are we doing with the challenge? I think the team are doing incredibly well, actually. Yeah. I think on the notice board, I can't quite see where we... We did 150 miles yesterday, so that was a very good start. We now, if, you, of... if you're ahead of schedule, do you, will you knock off at Sunday lunchtime? <laughs> that would be nice, wouldn't it? Or you'll push on. No, I think we'll keep going. Keep yeah, going, hoping yeah. more people will throw more pounds into those buckets. Yeah because yeah. that's you, obviously the whole course. You can set a record this year, and then next year you can see if you can better that record. Well, that's right. Well, last challenge. year we um, we had something similar going on because mm. we our deputy chief executive was running the London Marathon in aid mm. of our cancer research. So he was here plodding away on the treadmill with, with the team and raised loads of money for that. So we thought, what can we do this year? We've got a couple of cycling events coming up. We've got a team in the Ride London to Surrey event in yeah. August, and we're also doing our own dog sport team in Suffolk um, on the 4th of August that people can get involved and join so this was a good way of sort of promoting yeah. that as well as trying to raise a few money and just drive home to people what, what we need to do in terms of cancer research so that dogs yeah. have a better chance of beating it Absolutely Where can people find out more about you online? Um, we have a website the website is www.aht.org.uk Brilliant Best of luck with the challenge Thank Cheers. you very much <laughs> Thank you And now I'm going to talk to Mark Abraham we're going to have our chat about puppy farming, why Mark's at Crufts, and the whole principle of how we improve the world of dogs. Tell me why you're here at Crufts. I'm here at Crufts because I always support Crufts. Crufts for me is all about not just the pedigree dog showing, but promoting responsible dog breeding, uh, promoting charities, whether it's rescue charities or assistance dogs charities, um, and looking at the agility and the fly ball, and, and it's more of a sort of a dog festival these days than a pedigree dog show. So it's looking at all the different uh, aspects of dog ownership what's, and also what products are new on the market as well, which I think is important for a vet to know. Uh, so it's kind of a bit of everything really and I'm also looking at um, potential exhibitors to attend my paid 
uh, doctor right. as well. So it's a lot of sort of giving out business cards and chatting I must point out for people who don't recognise you, of course, in your very smart suit today, that you would normally have your trademark blue scrubs on. They are in my bag. They, I know, I know. But now tell me why we're sort of dressed up then. Where are you about to go to join them? Uh, about to join the uh, Best in Show. Yes. And uh, to sit with the Kennel Club and support Best in Show. And then in your dog tie? Uh, in my dog tie with my dog cufflinks. Perfect. Um, and then have a few drinks afterwards and a bit of food and sort of mingle with the, the kennel club yeah, for heading home. Excellent. Now, on the bigger scale of dogs and problems in the world, mm. um, I know you've got the big campaign puppet. Now, if anybody doesn't know anything about it, please explain what Pup Aid is all about. Okay, thanks, Debbie. So, Pup Aid is basically a campaign to educate the nation about what puppy farming is and how to choose a dog responsibly. So, really, um, with, there's so many sort of internet sales at the moment, as you know, and um, dogs being sold in pet shops and in garden centres and lots of scams, as you brilliantly wrote about once. Um, it's, it's very important for people to make the right decisions when choosing a dog. And the reasons for that are, are many fold. Um, firstly, it's an animal welfare issue. So, you've got big, big sort of ex agricultural sheds in Wales that have fall to the brim of breeding bitches that are bred on every season. And who are extending and getting planning permission for more as we speak, As we speak. Um, so they're kept in horrific conditions, they're bred on every season, they're kept alive to breed. Puppies are removed too young and then they're sent across the country and sold in all sorts of ways through dealers, through pet shops, through garden centres. Um, the, the breeding bitches, the mothers are in a horrific condition, um, so are the stunt dogs. The puppies are also in, in a even worse condition. They often die when they reach their new home um, or they are diseased for life, whether that's medical disease, surgical disease, uh, or behavioural disease. behaviour problems, absolutely. I mean, as you know, um, when I've helped you with this, I talk a lot about the behaviour aspects of this, unsocialised puppies, parents with health and temperament problems being bred from, simply to supply a market. It, it, it's purely market. commercial. So the, the main real drivers for this industry, of course, is celebrity culture uh, and also convenience culture because it's just so easy to get a dog. Um, and also dogs aren't really valued as family, part of the family unit anymore as they used to be. They're sort of fashion accessories, they're handbag toys. Driven really. by television, unfortunately. They're driven by television. So it kind of, there's lots of different levels of pup aid, um, but it's really to push people either to get a dog where you, get a puppy where you always see the mother, because it's very unlikely to be a puppy farm if you see the mother. So pet shops, garden centres, online, you will never see the mum, and that's because they are from a really, really uh, horrific place. Um, as responsible breeders, such as the Kennel Club Assured Breeder Scheme, yes. is, is really the gold standard in, in dogs where to get a dog from, or rescue dogs, mm -hmm. which you obviously you'll never see the mum because they're a rescue centre, but always make sure it's a registered charity rescue centre, because again, one of your scams that you've promoted before is people posing as rescue when they're not actually rescued. Well, that's true, but it, th there's plenty of independents that aren't charities that are legitimate, and there's plenty of charities that aren't. It, there, there's good and bad, sadly, in So it boils down world. to doing your research. Research, right? absolutely, the research. Um, now, I, it's important to mention here, because I've been with you in Parliament, yes. that uh, there's a lot goes on behind the scenes, and you've talked to a lot of MPs, mm. you know, I've, I've been there with you, and we've talked and pushed the case, and that's an ongoing thing as well, yeah. isn't it? It's an ongoing thing, and, and it becomes quite Quite frustrating and disheartening because the people who can really change things for the better for animals are MPs and they they kind of pretend that they care and, and then you, you feel a bit empowered and, and happy when you leave Parliament and then nothing really happens but I had a recent me meeting with Caroline Lucas who coincidentally is my local MP uh, and we have a plan. Oh do you? Yeah. A man with a plan. It's like a really a clever a plan. plan and it will, it will cause the biggest change so far in human behaviour with regards to buying a puppy. Well, I, I, I sincerely hope so. Now we need to talk about the Pup Aid show. Yes. So Pup Aid is, is So where, a, where are we heading to? Because that's the big thing isn't it? Yeah. It's it kind of that's the culmination of bringing everything together in one big message. So, Tell, tell us about the Pop Aid Show. So the Pop Aid Show is an annual show, it'll be its fourth year this year, it's second in London. We moved it from Brighton, which was a spiritual home, uh, where I'm from, to, to London, to Primrose Hill. Lazy. Yeah, and it's very lazy, obviously. Um, and it's at Primrose Hill where lots of famous people are. We're at Primrose Hill again this year? Mm -hmm. That's the same place. And basically Pop Aid is, is instead of waiting for MPs 
or new laws or any form of legislation to improve animal welfare and the whole puppy farming thing. Um, we are using celebrities and their followers and their fans to get the message to actually stop the supply because in my view the only way to stop puppy farming is, is to educate people so they do not buy them in the first place. Now puppets helped enormously by your sponsors of course, so please tell us who they are. Yes, we are unbelievably thankful to our sponsors who are Barking Heads, Dog Food, mm -hmm. Dog and Cat Food, they're Meowing Heads as well, and Spec Savers, yeah. huge dog lovers, they've always supported us, and Pets Pajamas, who's a really cool online sort of sh shopping place. Um, and also it's worth mentioning Can Associates, who are our PR company, yes. who are doing, us fen they're doing phenomenal work for us. They're also big dog lovers. And they are the route to these huge celebrities. So today on Croft Sunday, it's Mother's Day as we know, and we're running a, a Twitter campaign as we speak, which is hashtag Where's Mum. Right. It's encouraging people get on to, to Twitter, ask, everybody. Yeah, encouraging people to ask where mum is when they get a puppy. And people like Amy Childs have been tweeting, and, and really people with hundreds of thousands of uh, followers. So again, it's education. Even more than you. Yeah. So it's education. It's reaching the tabloid demographic. It's reaching the people who are buying these puppies. And and really, with the best will in the world, they just don't know that they shouldn't be. Is there anybody else you'd finally like to thank in terms of the puppy campaign? As well as you? Apart from me. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone associated with it. I'd like to thank you know the, the big celebrities that turn out every single year. You know Brian May, Ricky Gervais, Sarah Harding, Joanna Page. Um, just just incredible, really. Liam Gallagher. So there's all these dog loving or animal loving celebrities that are willing to help raise awareness and finally put an end to a horrific practice which goes on day in day out in your in your back garden. Really. And, and the common man who comes and supports your shows and. For sure, yeah, everyone, and everyone, everything, every everyone involved. involved, yeah, and people like you who help to spread the spread the word and, and, talk, and to you talk to me, and also to come to Parliament with me as well. It's yes. a huge, it's a huge help, yes, and it's that was great. The to, one, I, think, I know, and the, the more people that get together and cause this movement, which is happening, the quicker that it stops. And, and the let's hope we, we can. Let's hope we can. Yeah, we can watch this space. What Pup Aid on Twitter, obviously at Pup Aid. At Pup Aid. All yeah. one word. It's going to be quite interesting in the next few months because we're going to do some stuff that's never really been done before. You heard it here first. And you heard it here yeah. first. But I can't give too much away. Oh, well, you're the second person to tell me that today. Yeah, that's but it's great. all good. It's all good for dogs and it's that's all good great. for animal welfare. Well, thank you, as you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mark Abraham, Pup Aid, get onto Twitter, follow. Thank you. I'm always attracted to a story about poo, particularly if it's a way to get a, an end product from what is a waste product. So I'm, I'm going to talk now to Jill Diamond about the poo wormery. So dog poo wormery? Yes. Sounds like a fantastic idea. How does it work? It works exactly the same as it does in nature. Mm -hmm. In nature, worms come to the surface of the ground, they eat dead and rotting material, and that could be anything like fallen leaves off trees, plants, that sort of thing, but also faecal matter. So out in the woods and the fields, there is horses, dogs, badgers, foxes, you name it, they're all out there pooing. Yeah. Worms come up to the surface, they eat it, usually at night, take it down into the ground, and what worms poo out is worm castings, which is a natural organic fertiliser, yeah. without which nothing would grow. And so in a wormery, for a dog poo, it works exactly the same as in nature. The worms are in the wormery. You put in your dog waste, and you can put in kitchen waste and garden waste. Hmm. The worms will eat it, and when they've eaten it, you will end up with a whole layer of castings that you can take out and put in your garden. Fantastic! It is yeah. really simple and really, really good. Yeah. How long does it take for you to sort of get this, this end result? It usually takes at least a year to fill up yeah. a standard wormery. And we've got different wormery sizes for different numbers of dogs. Yeah. But an average wormery takes about between one and two years. But a good year to fill up. Because worms, what they're pulling out is a very small amount. Yeah. And worms will eat their body weight in one to four days. Yeah. And the average worm weighs about a gram. So it depends how many worms you've got and how much food you're giving them. Yeah. It usually takes about a year. And what happens is as the wormery fills up, you have the worms living at the top part where the yeah. food source is. Yeah. And they don't like, like most animals, worms don't like living in their own poo. So the worms will come up to eat and down to poo. Yeah. And so at the bottom will be the castings and at the top will be the worms. So when you take the castings out, you leave the worms where they are. Yeah. And they carry on replenishing themselves within the bin so you never replace your worms. Yeah. 
Wow. So how do I actually start one off? I just put the, the dog poo in the... Yes, we yeah. Uh, the one we comes as a complete kit. It comes with a bin and everything you need to set it up, including yeah. a really good manual that tells you everything you need to know. Yeah. Once you've got it set up, you send us the voucher, we'll send you the worms. Yeah. We use special worms, they're dendrobena worms. We use dendrobenas because they're prolific eaters of a wide source of a variety of food. Yeah. And so they make ideal worms for wormeries. Then once they're settled in, you just put in your dog waste. And if you pick up using the plastic bag method, yeah. We have some special bags which are biodegradable, fully mm. compostable bags. Pick it up with those and you put the bag in and the worms will eat the bag oh, wow, as well. the whole thing? Yes. Wow, that's fantastic. And do, do you sort of get to a point where you have to clean everything out and start again or does it just... No, yeah. because the worms are living at the top and the castings at the bottom. When you take the castings out, the worms stay where they are. So you shouldn't ever need to replace your worms or restart the unit. Unless you, for any reason, have a problem with the worms, like they die, for whatever reason. Yeah. But um, as long as you treat them carefully, like all creatures, don't let them get too hot in the summer or too cold in the winter. They should last for years and years and years. And it's this kind of size of bin. We're looking at a sort of a... a that, that's the kind of bin that I've got in my house. I've got a black yeah. bin and a green bin for the recycling. That kind of standard, standard bin. green wheelie bin is a size that we use for about two to four dogs. Yeah. A smaller bin, the 120 litre, is usually for up to about three dogs. Yeah. And then we've got the very big one for up to about 15 dogs. <laughs> wow. Yes. That, that's industrial strength, that is. Your industrial one. It's more for the kennels. Yes, yeah, and rescues, I imagine. But yeah. it's fun. I think it's a fantastic idea because, as I say, I'm out there picking up, it feels like pounds of dog poo in my garden on a daily basis. And it just goes into the bin and you know it's no good to anybody so this is a fantastic idea it is a great idea and it's very popular we've got people coming back to find their second and their third ones now because they've got a few dogs and they start with the smaller ones to see how it goes and then we'll come back and buy a bigger one or a second or a third but yes they are very very popular yeah, i mean you could even have one a council could put one in to encourage does that happen Good. the trouble with councils is you're then relying on the general public to pick up the waste and not use plastic bags yeah because plastic bags are just going to stay there with dog poo in for a hundred odd years yeah so no it's, that's the problem is educating the general public yeah individuals yeah. who are committed to it and use it properly love it I, I think it's brilliant where can people find out more about you online you can go online to www.dogpoowormery.com brilliant That's simple. thank you you have made my day thank you very much my pleasure <laughs> nice to talk Cheers. to you and coming up now is the interview with john howie the co-founder with john davies of lint bells some interesting supplements which benefit both show dogs and pet dogs Hello John, Hi tell there. me a little bit about this company then, how did it start, what's it all about? Okay, so we started back in 2007, uh, so if I, this is our fifth crafts now in fact, mm. uh, and we started, we basically were looking at the nutrition of dogs and at the time we were particularly interested in skin and coat health. Yes. Um, we'd identified that uh, a number of the foods were very good but couldn't always put everything into the food that they needed in order to get the best quality of skin and, and coat. Right. Um, and we'd discovered a few key omega-3 and 6 oils that could help. So we looked at developing our first product. And your first product was, of course? The first product was Umega. Umega. That's how we uh, established the business. I uh, remember when it was just Umega. It was just Umega, yep. Yeah, Seems like five product. minutes ago. I know. <laughs> now, the, a supplement wasn't new to the world of dogs, the idea of giving supplements to dogs. No. But yours was a little bit different, wasn't it? And people didn't always get it at first. So what was, what was the resistance like at first to this? I think most of the resistance at first was people assumed that they could get, get everything in the food. Um, um, and as I say, most of the uh, good quality diets do do most of the work. Um, but also, they were used to having a lot of quite poor quality products that didn't necessarily do what they said. Um, so there was a lot of resistance to people not really trusting supplements. So tell me what was different when you brought Umega out then. How, what was different about it compared to what was already on the market? Well, we always develop all of our products from a very sound scientific base. So we're making sure that when we actually release a product, it will actually do what we promise it will do. And that's always been a very important part of what we're trying to do. Because without doing that, we just fall down as soon as we start. 
Um, so what we identified there was that there were key oils that if you treated the processing and the development of those oils properly, you got very high levels of active omega-3s and 6s. And that was able to help support the skin, but also support the coat health, coat growth as well. Right. But it, they, we're not just talking about this product for sure, dogs. I know we're at Crufts. Mm. But you sell an awful lot of this to every dog owner. It Absolutely, isn't It isn't yeah. just for those dogs wanting to compete, is it? No, not at all. I mean, now the Umega range is the number one fatty acids, the number one omega-3 and 6 supplement range in the country for skin and coat. Wonderful. So now we're, we're selling to owners with problems like itching and scratching that might have a lot of molting going on, it could be dry skin problems. So now we're across the range of skin and coat health areas. Right. We're doing that. Tell me about you move. You're wearing this on your shirt. Oh yes. And, and <laughs> you know I'm a big day. fan of you move. <laughs> Tell people what the U move's all about then. So the U move is our uh, range of joint supplements. So what we've done with um, U-Move, we looked at the joint supplements that are available. So this is for dogs with stiff joints, uh, with mobility problems, they might have arthritic conditions that they're trying to look after. Um, the existing supplements were mostly based on, green, on glucosamine and chondroitin. Yes. So they were quite straightforward, if you like. Yeah. What we looked at said, well, we need to sort out the mobility problem that they've got, mm. which is usually down to swelling in the joints and pain in the joints, right. which is why we put greenlit muscle into our joint supplement as well. Yes. It's a very good natural product for reducing swelling and, and stiffness, uh, and it's also scientifically proven to actually yes. work. Yes, we love the science, don't we, we John? Do. <laughs> now, we are at Cruft, so we do have to talk about the shore dogs, I'm afraid. Yeah. So we need to look at these new things that you're doing with Umega. So tell me what these are about. Okay, so we've we've now launched a new version of Umega, Umega Show Dog. Uh, what we've done there, we've, we've taken our experience over the last five years. We've had huge success uh, with people at uh, in the, the Crufts Arena. We've yes. got a lot of best in show winners, uh, a lot of best in breed. And I've stood on this, Dan, and seen people coming up to you thanking you. So yeah. I, I know you're doing a good job. What we've done with, uh, with the show dogs, we've used that experience to see how we can improve upon the original formula. Uh, so we've increased some of the key omega-6s that help with coat growth and coat recovery. Uh, we've also now improved it by putting in uh, lutein and an omega-3 called DHA. They're very important for eye health. So as well as skin and coat, we are now able to look after eye health as well, which is, again is an important health factor in, in show dogs. It is, it is indeed. So how's this going down at Crufts then, the show version? Very well, very well. Very well. Now, where's the company going then, John? Is there anything left to invent? Is there anything left to improve? There is always, yeah, there's always room for opportunity. Um, I mean, don't give me any marketing secrets away, you know, because no, I, I might sell it. No, I shan't, I shan't let you into too much of a secret. Uh, no, obviously we've got the key areas in terms of skin and coat, in terms of joints, we yep. do the digestive health range. Yes. Um, but there are a number of other conditions that we're looking at carefully at the moment. Um, work in progress. Work in progress. We're also developing more of a cat range as well now. Yes, so. it, it's probably illegal to mention cats and crush, <laughs> but I've got away with it before. And it is important that people understand you do do a cat Yamiga, yeah. which, which you know that I use for the Bengal Cat Rescue. Absolutely. And they can use certain other products as well, can't Yeah, we, we have a specific U-Move range for cats now as yes. well, which we Excellent. launched last year. Um, we're working on another range at the moment for another key condition in cats. Excellent. Watch this space on Yes, that. you're not going to tell me what it is though, are you, I'm John? No, face, I, can, no. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell. Well, congratulations on all your success. Thanks for talking to us today. Thank it's you. It's John Howie from Lint Bells. Thank you. You know by now I'm also attracted to a positive story, a happy story. We've got a smashing schmaltz corner. So here's the interview with Steve and Lorraine Wright, who were celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary at Crufts 2013. You've known each other an awful long time, you and Lorraine, haven't you? We actually live facing each other in the same street. Yeah, and um, how old were you then? Uh, 11 years old, poss yeah. possibly, yeah. 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 <laughs> and did you know even back then, I mean, was the romance, the, well, not the romance, but was, did you know you had things in common and you got on well even then? Not we, we, we actually live next door to each other. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah and that's what we, when we started. Um, basically, really, we, when we got married, didn't we? You wanted a, a big dog, and we started yeah. off with a Great Dane. Really? And yeah. somebody yeah. seen us with it, and they said, oh, you should show that dog, it's really yeah. nice. Yeah, street, yeah. And that's yeah. how it... So you, came, you started showing... We started and, yeah. showing and the... winning with the dog, and then we went to another breeds, didn't we? And 
yeah, 34 it, years on. Yeah, when, yeah, when, <laughs> the, when the Great it. Dane died, we, we just wanted another breed, so went into Briards. Yeah. Another, a coated breed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Had success in them, and obviously, the, the more you, success that you get, the more you, obviously, it's like everything else, the more you want. It yeah. doesn't matter what sport you're in, it's more and more and more. Yeah. But obviously, it's the enjoyment of it. And, and to be yeah. fair, a show like Crufts, it's a social life of it. Because, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It, because, I mean, when you think that there's a lot of people you don't see from show to show, yeah. there's a lot of uh, overseas people that you'd never see. You may talk to them on Facebook, email, and then you, you see them here just once a year. But, but generally, I think that the dog world that we've had is we've had a great social life. You know, some great fun really. Met some, met some fantastic friends all over the world. I mean, and children grew up with it. You know, they they were tiny babies when we started. You know, and they they did junior handling and really. So yes. it's, it's not just you two. It's no, a family no, thing, it's yeah. a family thing. Yes, That's they lovely. did it as well. And now they've gone their separate ways because they're married. And but we still carry it on. Yeah. So, yeah. so you've shown lots of different breeds here yes. as well. Yes, we've, we've had um, Tibetan Terriers yeah. and um, Briards. Yeah. The main no. breed now is just German Spitz. Just we've had German, German Spitz, Spitz for yeah. 25 years. Yeah. yeah. For that, 25 years you've shown yes. German, German Spitz? Spitz. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what successes have you had at Crufts? Uh, we've had Best of Breed. We've got Best of Breed last year yeah. with the dog that we've got here today. Yeah. We've had... Uh, Four we've best made, of breeds. And we've made about five champions up. But, yeah. 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 Excellent. And we Excellent. own the breed record as well. We've yeah. got 33 cc's on one dog. Wow. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. And a to total cc's, I mean, it, it, the general public don't know what cc's are. Is It's a challenge certificate. And you have five classes. And at the end of the five classes, you've got five dogs. And they pick the winner out of that. Yeah. Which gains a challenge certificate. Yeah three challenge certificates makes it a champion yeah. uh, and over the years I think we've probably got just over 100 cc's wow so yeah. we've had some phenomenal some, uh, yeah. success yes. and, yeah. and, and on the continent I think we're the only people in the breed the German Spitz breed that we've bred five home bred international champions wow yes, yeah. Yeah. so I mean you've got lots of reasons to celebrate but yes, yes. this is a, a special anniversary this well, year well yes because it's friends you know we've known some of these people 34 years yeah. 25 years in the spits yeah. other breeds like the Shih Tzu's and the Briars will come later and people like that we've known since we very first started and the Dane people you know yeah. and you still see them today you know and you think I was only 20 when we started <laughs> yes. now we're all in our <laughs> 60s like, you know and yeah. we're still yeah. going strong Yeah. and so how long have you been married though? 40 years. Yeah. yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, and our friends there 25 years on yes. the same day. Wow, yes. that's fantastic. So obviously the secret of a long happy marriage is stay dog away showing. from each other. <laughs> yeah, stay away from each other. Now don't spoil it. Yeah. And don't no, get married we'll now. do that again. <laughs> no. No. Yes, do you, it is. Yeah. Yes. Do you think it does help having that something in common You've that you have, have a passion? Something in common. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Because really, if you've not got nothing in common. You know, and say like, Steve went off to the dog shows. I'm left at home, and I think, yeah, you know, yeah. I love dogs just as much as him. So I might yeah. as well be there. Yeah. You've got to have your you own know. space as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I like sport. Yeah, I and I like that. craft. So yeah. when we're not showing, I'd, we both do his own thing. Yeah. Right? So you've got that shared space, yes. but you've got yes, your, yeah, your freedom same as well. Interest as well. Yeah. yeah. So let's bring your your friends in. Sorry. So Better. remind me of your name. Sorry, Barry and Yvette. Yvette. Halligan. And you've been married 25 years? Yes. Yeah. Wow. So how long have you been showing? Eight years. Eight years. So you're relative newcomers then? We are, yeah. We're, <laughs> yes, we're, we're beginners. Yeah. Yes, we're beginners. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. what made you take up showing? Well, I had... Um, I took the rescue. I done the rescue. Yeah. I took the rescues in. Yeah. And then uh, when they all died, my husband said, um, we, we'll have a puppy. Yeah. And of course she started this off. My yeah. little girl, oh. and she travels. She women all over the country with her. With yeah. her anyway, yeah. Showing all, you know, showing all, you know, all the championships, so all yeah. the club open shows. Yeah. So she got us out. Yes. Yeah. She and really did. And of course, now we've got a caravan. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. But it does so, become yes. like a social it outing, is, yeah. an event for, for people, yes. doesn't it? Yeah. 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 So yeah, so they've got a caravan now. Yeah. To get us yeah. um, down and about. And, and have you been successful at Crufts before? Um, we've come 
third. Yeah, that's good. That's you good. I've done a second as well, haven't you? Oh, yes. I've done yes, a second. Class, yeah. Yeah. You've all done brilliantly well, and congratulations to you all. Oh, that's okay. been lovely. Thank, thank, thank you very much. So, here we are at the end of Crufts 2013. What kind of show have you had, Debbie? Excellent. Lots yeah. of dogs, apparently. It did quite a few. Yes, I've yes. seen them around. Lots of dogs. Had a good time. Um, I've seen some great demos. Um, I've been around the charity stalls. I've talked to everybody, and I apologise to anybody who I haven't managed to actually speak to, but there can't be many of them left. No, What's been your favourite thing? I have to say... Apart from the enormous shopping bags that you've Yes, had. my bargains. But I have to say, I've really enjoyed Crofts Factor. And it didn't all go according to plan this year, I know, but... It encourages pet owners, like me, to actually train mm. and do something with do their some dogs. Do some tricks, have some fun. Yeah, yeah, have some fun. And occupy their dog's brain. Well, we'd like to thank everybody who's been interviewed, who listens to the show, everybody at Crofts, the Kennel Club and everybody else. And if you want to get in touch with us, I'm Debbie at thedognewshow.com. And I'm Julie at thedognewshow.com. Thank you, everybody.